Okay, so I'm posting this video the day after Christmas. So I first want to say that I hope all of you out there had a wonderful Christmas. I had an excellent Christmas myself. And now I get to get back to my true passion, which is teaching mathematics. And uh, I have a nice, interesting prom here, a pretty typical algebra word prom, not overly difficult. Let me uh, first go ahead and read this thing to you, and then we'll talk about the solution to this uh, prom in a second. But the prom is the average of x, x plus 1, 2x plus 7 is 52. What are the numbers? So we're looking for three mystery numbers. And how do we solve this? Well, again, you're going to need to know some algebra. And uh, if again, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, doesn't make a difference. You could be taking math 101. As long as they have algebra in there, you're likely going to run into problems like this. So if you think you could solve this problem, go ahead and pause the video, put your answers into the comment section. Of course, I'm going to um, go through, now I'm going to first give you the solution, then I'm going to go through the step-by-step process to solve this problem. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, all of you can be successful in mathematics, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Maybe you've uh, failed uh, math many times. Maybe you think you're like terrible math. I'm telling you that is incorrect. What you need is great math instruction. You need a teacher that's going to encourage you to learn math, okay, with clear, understandable, and comprehensive math instruction. That's what I do. That's what I love to do. So if you're taking any sort of math course and you need assistance, or maybe uh, you're preparing for uh, some sort of special test like the SAT, ACT, ASVAB, uh, teacher certification exam, anything with math on it, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of, the, uh, description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, I'm going to leave links to my math notes just in case your notes are not quite yet up to speed. But I can tell you right now, if you're a math student, you need to learn how to take awesome math notes. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer to this problem, and then I'm going to show you exactly how we find that answer. All right, so we have the average of these three mystery numbers, x, x plus 1, 2x plus 7. We just know that the average of these three numbers is 52. What are the numbers? Here they are right here, 37, 38, and 81. Okay, so how did you do? If you got this right, pretty impressive. Matter of fact, impressive enough for you to get a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%. And because we are in the holiday season, I'm going to give you multiple stars. Okay, just multiple stars. Let's just load them on there so you can have an extra, extra special day. So uh, nice job. Okay, so if you got this right, uh, how did you get this right? Well, you couldn't just kind of do mental math and think about this. This is going to require you to do some algebra, namely you're going to have to set up an equation. But before we even do that, we need to understand what the average is. Okay. So what is the average and how do we calculate the average? Well, I'm going to show you that here in a second. There's another fancy uh, word for the average and that is the mean. Okay. Not to be confused with the median. All right. So there's another word out there, the median. All right, actually just list a couple of these words down. The median, the mean, and the mode. All right, all these words right here is a kind of basic statistics. And what we call it, really it's called the measures of central tendency. So oftentimes students will confuse the mean and the median. All right, don't confuse these two. The mean is the average, right? So let's talk about how to find the average of numbers. Okay, so before I get into the actual problem here, Let's say I have three numbers, uh, three, five, and one. All right, so how do we find the average of any numbers? Well, what we got to do is we have to add up the numbers, right? So how many numbers do I have here? One, two, three. So we're going to find the sum of the numbers. So in this case, it's going to be three plus five plus one. And we're going to divide by how many numbers we have. Again, we have one, two, three numbers. So we're going to add up the numbers. Three plus five plus one, of course, is nine. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. That is the average, okay? And if you just look at these numbers, here we have 3, there's 5. If you wanted to know the average, if we kind of wrote this in order, 1, 3, or uh, wrote the numbers in order, 1, 3, and 5, look at that. 3 is right in the middle. So anyways, the average is 
a, a measurement of something called the measures of central tendency, the median and the mode, and some other things as well. Just so we're clear on that, but this is how you find the average. Most of you probably remember that, but here's the deal. If you didn't remember how to find the average or just basic numbers, you won't be able to do this problem. So let's just talk about how to find the average of these numbers. Well, these are just kind of mystery numbers. These variable expressions represent numbers, but the procedure is still the same. We're going to take this number, we're going to add it to this number, we're going to add it up to this number, and we're going to divide by what? Well, we're going to divide by 3 because there's 1, 2, 3 numbers. So that's the setup here. We just know that the average of these three numbers is 52. Okay, And remember, this word is... Uh, in uh, terms of translating to an algebraic expression or mathematical ex uh, expression is always equal to. Okay, so the average of these three numbers is equal to 52. So what you want to do here is set up an equation. Hopefully you can set this thing up. I'm kind of giving you some hints here because I uh, want to give you an opportunity to, you know, take this problem in full control. But I'm going to show you exactly the equation. And, of course, we're going to solve this right now. All right, so here we go. So we have x, x plus 1, and 2x plus 7. The average is 52. So that's the problem. So what we need to do is we got to add up these three numbers. Okay, so we have x, x plus 1, and 2x plus 7. I'm putting them in parentheses, grouping symbols, just so they kind of stand out as individual numbers that we're uh, uh, looking for. But you know, technically, you don't have to have those parentheses. But what you do need to do is the following, okay? I'm trying to find the average of uh, these three numbers, so I'm going to add up these three numbers and divide by 3. So this is how we find the average of these three numbers. We just know that that is going to be equal to 52. The average of these three numbers is equal to 52. Let me write that a little nicer here. It is equal to 52. I do these templates. I kind of set up my problems in advance so I can kind of freely speak about what's going on. But um, anyway, so one of the things just, uh, if you notice back here, okay, I have my little equal sign up here. I didn't like that. I was kind of, eh, you know, uh, you want to be particular when you write in uh, mathematics, okay? Mathematics is like a language, so you want to just try to be as neat and structured um, as you can because what you're doing is forming habits. The way you write math, uh, if you write sloppy or if you write like, okay, in your homework or your note-taking, that's exactly how you're going to do things on quizzes and tests. So it really is a discipline to try to improve your neatness and organization. So every little tiny little thing does count. And if you see something, don't be afraid to use your eraser. That's why you want to do math always in pencil and not in pen. Okay, so here is the equation that is going to allow us to figure out what these three numbers are, right? So we have this number plus this number plus this number divided by 3, i.e. we're finding the average of that. We just know that's going to be equal to 52. So uh, now we have to figure out how to solve this equation. So how many of you out there can solve this equation? That's the next step, right? So if you're able to set up the equation, actually set up the equation, that's the first important thing to do. The second skill is your ability to actually solve this algebraic equation. So if you want to pause the video now and see if you can figure this thing out, I think that's excellent. But let me go ahead and show you how to solve this equation now. Okay, so basically there's two ways you can look at uh, uh, taking the first step here, right? Let me actually fix this as well. Um, you now, uh, if you are confused, okay, on solving equations or confused on any of this stuff, I'm going to go ahead and suggest a couple of courses. I would probably su uh, suggest like my pre-algebra or algebra one course in my math help program. I also have a ton of additional videos on uh, all this stuff on my YouTube channel as well. So check out those two uh, courses if you want more formal instruction on this stuff. But here's the deal. What you have to recognize is the following. You can look at this equation two ways, okay? You can look at it as a proportion, okay? And a proportion is two equal fractions. So for example, let's say I have the fraction one half and just think of an, another fraction that's equal to one half, but we're going to use different numbers. So use easy numbers like three over six, four over eight, five over ten. Doesn't let's use five over ten, right? So these are two equal fractions. In mathematics, we call this a proportion. Okay. So when you have a proportion, two uh, fractions that are equal to one another, what is equal is the cross product. In other words, if we 
uh, multiply diagonally, the product, the result, is equal. So let's just see this in action. So we have 1 times 10 is what? That's 10. Is that equal to 2 times 5? Well, 2 times 5, of course, is 10. So 10 is equal to 10. That's an illustration of the cross product. Okay. So when you have two equal fractions, the cross product is uh, true. Okay. So if you notice here, I have one fraction bar and one fraction bar. This is uh, a fraction. This is one fraction and this is one fraction. Now, this is a big old numerator over here, right? I mean, the numerator is like big, but it doesn't make a difference. It's still, you know, a fraction. So what I can do is I can cross multiply this way. So 1 times this whole thing is just going to be this, all right? And that's going to be equal to 3 times 52, which is 156. And that's how I can clear uh, the fractions here and then start solving this equation. So that's a first good move uh, to kind of uh, do if you're looking to solve equations. If you see fracture bars, that's the um, or if you see two fractions, that's the best approach. Now, if you see more than two fractions, then you're going to have to take this approach. And this is not a bad approach as well, but basically what you could do is take the LCD. In this case, the LCD is what? That's three. Okay, you can multiply the entire equation by the lowest common denominator, and that's another way to clear these fractions as well. So this three would cross cancel with that three, and then we have to multiply three on both sides of the equation. So it would be three times this and three times that, and we would get to the same place. We'd still get to this equation here. So again, you know, um, you're going to have to know a lot about solving equations. Uh, I mean, and that is, a, in essence, a huge amount of uh, what algebra is about is solving various types of equations, linear equations, quadratic equations, exponential equations. I can go on and on and on. So if you're not strong with equations, you're not going to be able to uh, do these problems. But, okay, so those are two uh, approaches to uh, clear the fraction. So now what we have is this nice, lovely linear equation. And let's go ahead and solve this thing now. So what do you want to do? Well, let's go ahead and combine like terms. We'll add up all our x's. So x and x and 2x, that gives me 4x's. And then I have what? I have 1 and 7. It gives me 8. So I have 4x plus 8 is equal to 156. So what do I do here? Well, you're going to subtract 8 from both sides of the equation. I'm not showing that, but I'm telling you that's the step to do. So depending on what level of math you're in, if you're like in a pre-algebra course or any course, you would want to show this step like this. You could show it like that, and this would be the result. 4x is equal to 148. So how do I solve 4x? Well, I'm just simply going to divide both sides of the equation by 4. 148 divided by 4. x is equal to 37. Okay, so what does that mean, though? Well, remember, we had three numbers. One was x. The other was x plus 1. And the other number was 2x plus 7. So we just found our first number, 37. Okay, so that's one of the numbers. To get this number, it's just going to be 37 plus 1. That's 38. And then we can figure this out as well. So let me show you that work right now. By the way, before I continue on, here's one thing that a lot of students do. Okay, I can guarantee this because I've been doing this for a long, long time. Matter of fact, I probably graded in my uh, years of teaching math maybe 100 million uh, homework, uh, quiz, let me not, not, you know, I'm exaggerating, not that much, but a lot, right? <laughs> so I've seen a lot of different stuff. And what I'm trying to get to you is this, a lot of students will get to this point of the problem. They'll be so excited. They'll be like, I'm so awesome. Check me out. Look at me. I'm going to get an A plus. They're focused on this and they turn in their work. They just like, look, I solved the problem. I'm so awesome. Listen, they didn't answer the question. Remember when you're solving a math problem, always go back before you walk away from that problem and look at that question mark. Like, did you answer the question? So, um, again, a lot of students will just solve the problem. Uh, they'll get like once, they'll solve the equation in the problem, but they'll forget to answer the rest, <laughs> the rest of the question. So don't make that mistake. All right, so let's go ahead and answer the rest, the rest of the, equa uh, not the equation, rest of the problem. Okay, so remember, we were told that x, x plus 1, 2x plus 7, the average of these three numbers is 52. Okay, so we just solved for x, so our first number is 37. So what's going to be our second number? Well, it's going to be 37 or x plus 1. We now know that x is 37, so that's going to be 37 plus 1. That's 38. So our first number is 37, our second number is 38, and our last number is 2x plus 7. Again, we know what x is. That's uh, 37, so that's going to be 2 times 37. 74 plus 7 
is 81. So these are our three numbers. So the average of these three numbers should be 52, right? So the average of 37, 38, and 81 should be 52. Well, let's go ahead and check that. Let's go ahead and just see how well we did. So 37 plus 38 plus 81, if we're going to find the average of these three numbers, we're going to add them up, divide by three. And when we add these numbers up, we get 156. Divide, by, divide 156 by three, you get 52. Okay, so now this is when you can be super excited. And matter of fact, you know, you have your hair standing up. Just be like so proud of yourself. Look at me. I can do math. I can do algebra. I am totally in control. And a matter of fact, I will prove to the teacher that I have the right answer. Prove to yourself. One of the things, just like on a side topic here, if you are a math student and you're taking uh, any kind of quiz or test or whatnot, the worst thing you could do is turn your test in early. Okay, I've seen this uh, 10,000 times through the years as well. If you have like 60 minutes, one hour to take the test, don't like rush to this thing and do it in 30 minutes and then be like, hey, check me out. I'm like so proud of myself. I am so smart. I'm so fast. I turn my test in and I still have 30 minutes left and I'll just kind of hang out and do whatever in my last 30 minutes. Never, ever, ever do that on a math test. Why? Because you need to take the time, if you can uh, have that extra time, if you do have the extra time, to check your work. Uh, every math problem uh, that you solve, uh, oftentimes, okay, you can check your, your solutions. You should check your solutions. So, for example, if I added this and I found out the, uh, if I was adding the average of the, my answer here and I got something other than 52, I'd be like, hey, something went wrong. I either am uh, not checking this correctly or I made a mistake. And that's how you, uh, you know, really ensure that you're going to maximize your uh, test grades, which, of course, uh, you know, turn into your actual grade in a math class. And that is important, especially if you're like a high school student or a college student. You know, your grades do matter. So, you know, I know many of you that watch my uh, videos on YouTube are students. So, you know, you want to have good grades. So I mean, all these little things, you know, I'm trying to teach you not only mathematics, but I'm also trying to teach you test taking tips you know, things that really count. Okay. So hopefully, you know, um, you know, you follow my advice, but Hey, whether you follow my advice or not, if the video helped you out, listen, that's what counts. Don't forget to like and subscribe again. If you need help with any of this stuff, two courses, I would suggest pre-algebra, algebra one. Again, you can find those at my math help program. Okay. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.